Howdy folks, little John here. Uh, just going to uh, do a quick uh, Bruce School video today. Just a quick short one. And this is on uh, how to reuse your yeast from a previous batch and keeping it so you can use it on your next batch. Uh, this is just a quick method of basically getting the yeast off um, to a point so you can reuse it. It's not about rinsing or cleaning, that's a different step. This is just simply reusing some of the yeast from one batch and putting it onto a next to save some money. Uh, this batch is with no IPA, it's got Mangrove Jacks M44 on it. It was a slurry from a previous batch. Uh, so I've already done this once. It was a rinsed yeast, so I'm just going to take this one off. This is just simply to show what it's done. I will rinse the yeast uh, prior to using it because I'm not going to use it for a while. But this is a process you'd use if you're making yeah, a similar sort of beer, one batch after another. So if you've made a, a pale ale, and you're going to make another pale ale, and you want to save yourself some dollars, you want to go out and spend you know, $10 on a couple of packs of yeast, or you know, 12 13 bucks on a, um, on a fresh liquid, this is, the, this is a nice easy way of uh, saving yourself some dollars. So, once you finish bottling your beer, just get the last of the uh, beer off the, um, off the yeast cake. Yeah, just pour it off. Nice and simple. Uh, we want to keep this as fresh as we can. So as I said, this is it's, it's really um, a, a money saving method. Um, and particularly if you're using um, using a liquid yeast, or if you do, you are sticking to the. Uh, two packets of yeast for your brew, like I said, which is what I seriously recommend that people should be doing. Uh, this is a good way of, of doing that, not spending that extra money. So, again, keeping the cost of your brewing down. So, that's it. what I've done, I've taken the beer off the top of that, top of that. Okay, so I've got the, uh, off the beer, off, beer off the cake. And have a look there, you can see there's a little bit left on top, but not much. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is get that just a simple jar of, uh, jar of water, and we're going to pour that into the fermenter. Alright, so I've got my jar in there, there. That's not just a jar of faint old tap water, the jar been cleaned, sanitised. I then put in there about half a jar of boiled water. Uh, pop the lid on it and let it cool overnight. Just to make again, just to make sure that jar's nice and clean. At this point we need good sanitation. Uh, the last thing you, you want to do when you try to save your yeast is get bugs all through it. Alright, so we pop that yeast in. The yeast. Pop the water into the yeast. Give it a bit of a swirl around just to mix it all up, get all the uh, cake up off the bottom. So of course there's going to be uh, a bit of hop debris and trim in there, so we want to get it as good. And then just simply going to fill that jar from the tap with what's in there. Now we're not going to get all, all of it. This was only a... Uh, 14 litre batch, so it hasn't got as much yeast as say a uh, full 23 litre batch would have. But we're still going to get a whack off this. And we'll get plenty for another batch. And that's it. Fill your jar, pop your lid on, and you can see there, there's still a whack of yeast still in there, but I don't really need to worry about that. And That there, once it's once it sits for a while, stick it in the fridge. It'll set down to a compacted, uh, nice cake there. And so if I'm making another pale ale today or tomorrow, yeah, I'm just not going to sit for too long. Pull that out of the fridge. Let it pour the uh, yeah the water off the top of it, and just let it come up to room temperature while I'm getting my brew on, and just dump that straight into the fermenter, into the brew, uh, as I would normally with my yeast. And bang, it's going to it's going to start up.
quicker, you had less lag time because the yeast is, yeah, it's multiplied, it's done its job, there's plenty of cells there. You've got a good healthy pitch. She'll fire away. So you're reducing your chance of infection and you're also making sure you're getting a good healthy yeast pitch and you're saving yourself some money. Yeah, so, and you can do that <coughs> many times. Uh, there is some to say sort of, you know, don't stretch it beyond sort of about five or six times just to avoid the yeast mutating. Um, and if you're doing this method, you don't really want to push it too far because because you aren't rinsing it, there's a little bit of crud in there. As I said, the rinse, rinsing is another step. It's, it's a bit more involved and uh, gets a little bit too carried away for, for some brewers. It's a little bit too much. But this, yeah, this works. This is a really good method. And if you can get, yeah, if you can get five brews out of ten dollars worth of yeast, so it's only two bucks, two bucks a brew. Yeah, that's brilliant. Even a, yeah, a couple of dollars a brew for for a good liquid yeast. Yeah, so you can get a bit of variety. Makes things much more affordable and allows you the option then of using something different. So that's it. Simple, very simple, easy way of reusing your yeast. It's not the only way. There's other ways of doing it, but that one's going to get you out of trouble nice and easy. I wouldn't let that sit for more than about three days in the fridge before you're using it directly. Any longer than that, you, you want to be washing it. Um, so when you're doing, if there's a straight turnover, I said, just for minutes going into the tub, it's getting, that's going to soak and clean. It'll have a fresh batch in it again this afternoon. I can fish that straight on, no problem at all. Okay? So that's it. Any questions, throw them down the bottom. Other than that, that's brew school for today. So until I'm seeing you again, good brewing.